These are the Orkney Islands. Located just 10 miles from the shores of Northern Scotland lies a collection of islands with a history like no other. Ancient Neolithic tombs are in abundance, but so too are powerful, rugged coastlines carved by erosion to the figures of giants, as well as sandy beaches with chalky blue waters. Wildlife is in abundance too, with bird life that darts along the coast and open moorland, and the coastal waters are a rich haven for dolphins and whales and wildlife moments that will wow you. If you're new around here, we're Jack and Joe, that's our scrappy hitchhiker Frank, and this is Big P, our home on wheels that has taken us on adventures to wild places all over the UK and Europe. If this sounds like your kind of thing, then put your feet up, click subscribe, and come along with us on these wild journeys to the Orkney Islands. Hello. We are in Orkney, we're in Stromness. We arrived yesterday. Um, the folk festival's going on at the moment. It was my birthday, we celebrated yesterday and I think the folk festival is going to continue. We've got about a week and a bit in Orkney. We're really excited to explore more of this island. Yesterday the weather was atrocious, but I think the next week or so, the weather looks beautiful. And I said this about Shetland, so obviously it can change within a heartbeat. Within a heartbeat? Within a blink of the eye. Um, we're with our friend Tom here. You might remember him from a few other Scotland videos. He's actually bought a camper van now. And we're going to go exploring this morning. We're going to leave Big P on the campsite that we're staying, on the Point and S campsite. We're going to explore some of Orkney's coastline. Here's Tom in his new van, look. Oi, oi. Let's roll. Yeah, baby. Oh, we so we've come to Yesnaby Cliffs. There's a nice walk down, there's a cool sea stack. There's lots of bird life along the coast. And the wind is a little bit strong, but not as strong as it was yesterday when it was like 40 mile per hour gusts. The coastline at Yesnaby is a spectacular place on the west coast of Orkney. Its bare rock base reveals the geological history of the Orkney Island. And the coastline here, consisting of red sandstone, has been eroded to reveal a series of interesting cliff formations, such as the sea stack, known as Yesnaby Castle. Really cool, kind of looks like a, less like a castle to me, but a Jenga tower that needs that little tiny bit taken out before it falls. There's also some seals surfing or hunting in the waves down here. Really awesome. After a blustery walk along the coast, we headed back to the campsite and into the town of Stromness, the final day of the Orkney Folk Festival. Cheers, 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 cheers. Good morning. Got, got, got a bit excited yesterday. Drank a lot of whiskey, uh, but the folk festival and the pubs were really good. Then we came back to the van, drank more whiskey. So Orkney is famous for its historic, his, its historic sites. And we're gonna have a, a historic day today. I think there's around 6,000 years of history on the island in, in the form of like different ruins and stone circles. And the Ring of Brodgar is probably its most famous stone circle. And hopefully we can dust off this hangover in this windy gray day that I thought was gonna be a blue one, but the weather forecast keeps lying to me. But we'll go. The center of Orkney has more ruins and stone circles you can shake a Neolithic Druid stick at. And the Ring of Brodgar is the jewel in its stone circle crown. No one really knows the purpose of the stones, but given its location in relation to ancient settlements and other stone circles in Orkney, it's thought the Ring of Brodga was built as a ceremonial gathering place. Amazingly, the people who placed the stones here did so with just people power, picks made from antler bone and stone tools. After a quick interlude of fetch on the beach, the weather switched from grey skies to some warm blues before long, we are on to the next part of our journey to learn more about Orkney and its famous history. 
The ruins here at Scara Bray were revealed one fateful morning in 1850 after a huge storm wrecked the sand dunes close to Scrail Beach, and they revealed a settlement frozen in time. It's said that in no other place in Western Europe can you see such rich evidence of how our remote ancestors once lived. Scara Bray predates the Pyramids of Giza and hints towards a civilization that lived here for centuries in relative peace and community. Each house was built almost identically, like a Neolithic new build estate, with a hearth for a fire at the centre of each home and rooms and beds where people once slept, cooked and ate. That was genuinely so fascinating, like incredible just to see, you know, what a village used to be like 5,000 years ago. That is just incredible. Um, and like the towns themselves are built on top of each other. So the buildings themselves are built on top of each other. So there's even older buildings underneath the ones that were revealed after a storm. So yeah, proper, proper fascinating. We're now gonna head to co-op and then we're gonna drive and find our park up for the night and maybe go for an evening walk. The day has completely changed to how it was this morning when we were at the, rock, when we were at the Stones of Brodka. Like it's beautiful and blue. Fingers crossed it sticks around like this for the rest of the week. But yeah, let's go find our park up for the evening. Off we drove to find our spot for the night or a detour past the hilariously named Hamlet of Twat and its church. <laughs> Check this out for park up view. This will do. What you this will do. do. This will do. This will do, Frank, won't it? So this spot, as well as being a very beautiful park up, is right next to an island called Bursay, um, where it's like a, there's like a tidal causeway. So we're just gonna quickly eat some food and hopefully in an hour or so, the causeway will be revealed because low tide's on its way at like 11 o'clock tonight. And then we can go over to the island um, for like a nice little sunset exploration. But first food. Slippy though. All right, it's definitely cleared up now. It's about half eight. <laughs> Frank's gonna go see Tom. Frank, be careful, it's slippy. As a tiny island, Bursley has a lot going for it. Firstly, as a thousand year old ruins of a Viking settlement, you have another intact ruin you can explore. This will be an all too frequent theme in Orkney but it's also home to towering cliffs with one of Scotland's smallest lighthouses perched on top. These cliffs are home to seabirds such as kittiwakes, puffins, fulmars, shags and more. The views from up here were incredible and given we crossed over late in the evening, the fact that we had this island all to ourselves made it feel even more special. The sea was raging and the wind was howling as we walked this rocky coastline on our lookout for bird life seeking refuge from the wind. The wind's pretty ferocious, but there are some puffins nesting just on the side of the cliff here as well, to show you. 
like you can just about see him. I didn't bring my massive lens today, but you can just about make him on the, on the shorter lens. Orkney consists of 70 individual islands, of which only 20 are inhabited. Each island is connected to the mainland or each other by a council-run ferry service. If you're travelling in a vehicle over 5.5 metres, the ferry team recommends you book your ferry tickets between these islands a few weeks in advance. Look how wise you look on your boat. Windy? A bit windy? <laughs> Welcome to the Isle of Hoi. Ahoy hoi! Ahoy hoi! I'm already liking what we're seeing. The sun's maybe coming out. The sea looks really light blue. Uh, how many days have we got here, Joe? So it's Wednesday two, evening two today. Days. Two full days, back on Saturday morning. Um, yeah, and there's going to be some cool stuff that we can do. I think you can do a day trip to Hoi, but we're, we're taking it easy. We're traveling a little bit slower and we're taking it in. Wow, look at the cliffs! Epic! That was actually freezing. See, it was proper rough. Stupidly scenic though. Really, really scenic. You can just see the old man of Hoy, which is probably what we're going to walk to tomorrow. Beautiful. It's time to get warm. Oh, I'm actually sh genuinely shaking. Oh, Joe, help me. Oh, look how blue it's got now. So this morning and pretty much for the afternoon, we've been chilling, went for a walk. Hoi is the RSPB's biggest nature reserve in Orkney. Um, so we did a bit of bird watching, went for a walk along a track, went and looked at all the three museums that are in this town, which are like old like folk uh, houses showing how like life on the island was kind of hundreds of years ago. And now it is quarter to six pretty much all of the clouds have gone. The blue skies that I've been banging on about for the past four or five days about coming have finally arrived and we're going to hike up to Orkney's most iconic, iconic site, the old Manor Hoy. Should be about three hours altogether. Because it's the evening there will hopefully won't be too many people on the hike and I mean the views now, like look Beautiful, the wind's died down. It's gonna be a good evening. If 
funny if I was called Cliff. <laughs> and so was Joe. <laughs> um. So, it is literally just us. Us three and the old man Ahoy. And Frank. And Frank. Us four and the old man Ahoy. The views are exceptional. Like, ridiculous. Wow. God. Oh my God. And the old man of Hawaii is just here. Check this out. It feels like this shin doesn't have anything underneath it. it no, it does, it does. Yeah, you've got to be careful on the edge. I'm glad we came on like a really still, sunny day. Yeah. Yes, we're really careful on the edge here, I reckon. Yeah. Thank wow. You. Rising out of the Atlantic Ocean to a height of 137 metres, the Old Man of Hoy is the UK's tallest sea stack. The prize of red sandstone, its fragility to the ocean has meant that the stack likely won't be here after a few hundred more years of erosion. It's a beautiful natural formation to look at and the perfect place to sit and watch the sun go down along with a few beers. Cheers, yes. guys. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Cheers to the old man of Hoy. Cheers. Cheers, bud. And we're the only ones up here. Oh my God, this is big line. You're like, oh, oh my God. God. But it's also a little bit terrifying where we're sitting. And I've got mixed emotions of awe and also fear. Gore. 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 But it's beautiful. Good boy. Beautiful day today, blue skies, lots of sunshine. I'm in the back of Tom's van because he won't let me sit in the front because you'll have to move stuff. And we're off on a hike, a poorly researched <laughs> hike that we might not be prepared for, but it is a beautiful day. And it is just up to, what's the hill called, mate? Uh, Ward Hill, mate. Ward Hill, where apparently from the summit you can see nearly all of the Orkney Islands on a clear day. Feels a bit, do you reckon it's a bit hazy? We'll see, we'll see what the view's like. But off we go, we have to drive to a different part of Hoy. Joe stayed in the van with Frank. Probably a wise decision, considering how many times Tom's got us lost before, but we'll see. We will see. Yeah, nice easy, nice easy climb. Straight up, yeah. 400 yards west of the end of the line. From here, strike out across open ground. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my compass bearing is south, southeast. Have you got a compass? No, so that's there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just means go up the fucking ridge. <laughs> All right, okay. On to very little directions, up the effing ridge we went. hike has two false summits. I think we've done the first one, we hope. Or maybe that was a false, false summit. And the second one's within sight, but it's hard going, going up. Especially with this heat. Ooh. The views are pretty amazing. Oh, Look at the views here, incredible. <laughs> wow.
Oi got its name from the old Nordic word for high, and on a clear day like this one, from the summit of Ward Hill, you can see nearly all of the Orkney Islands. After taking in the views and snapping some photos, we quickly bounded down the hill until I was served with a lovely realisation. Bye, mate! Funny story. Got down to the bottom, got to the van, and I realised I've left my new wide-angle camera lens back at the summit. So, back up we go. We did, we went up and down in two hours, two and a half hours. So, I'll do that. And then Tom will come pick me back up or I'll walk back through to Ratwick. Nice little bit of extra energy, extra exercise. Tom's giving me some bananas, some crisps, some nuts. Fun times. After that minor blip, we were back at Ratwick in time for a dip and a nice little cook up on the beach. Yeah. Is this Tom's favourite beach chili? Yeah, it's beach chili. Get in. Yeah. Does it? Crunch. Sand, bit of seaweed? Crunch, guys. Yeah, I'll have more than you guys. The next day we had an early departure from Hoi back to the mainland. We had one final special stop to make before we left what had fast become one of our favourite islands in Scotland. The Dwarfy Stain is 5,000 years old and is the UK's only rock cut tomb. Steeped in myths and legends about its origins and links to dwarves and giants, it's also known for its acoustics. Yeah, it got weird. <laughs> Someone's guffed in here. Not me. Our penultimate part of our Orkney journey took us to the island of Sandy, which is a huge contrast to the high peaks of Hoy. Instead of towering hills and rough seas, Sandy is smaller, flatter, calmer, and consists of incredibly beautiful white sandy beaches, an abundance of bird life and more ancient history to explore. This is Coyness Chambered Cairn, a 5,000 year old tomb built to house the remains of old Orcadian farmers. I thought it was a house. No, it's not a house. It's got to be such an impractical way to get to a house. There's a tomb, Joe. Oh, are these the Wow. Wow. It was another example of just how much incredible unknown history is here on these islands. I'm firmly of the belief that we could go back in time, then Neolithic Scotland would be the time we would choose. The roads were quiet on Sandy and nature was thriving. We went to sleep and woke up to birdsong. We spent two lovely days here, not really doing much apart from walking along Sandy's endless sandy beaches, watching seals play in the sea right by our van and enjoying the island's peace and peace. For our final few days in Orkney, we set ourselves the challenge of spotting some of its famous cetacean sea life. From the shores of Orkney, 
many people spot the likes of dolphins and whales, with some lucky ones spotting orcas too. So we drove to one of the best places to spot them, Molehead, and we were lucky enough to spot two dolphins swimming in the ocean. After another incredible park up on Orkney's west coast, we then headed further along the island back to Yesterby Cliffs, where we'd received a tip off of a special sighting. The waters, as you can see, were a lot calmer than those we experienced on our first few days in Orkney. And it meant that from our vantage point, in our tiny home on wheels, we experienced an incredible sight. Risso wow. dolphins jumping out of the sea, far into the distance. So that is the end of our Orkney adventure. That's been a really amazing 10 days. Has it been 10 days? Yeah. I don't know. It's been an amazing uh, week or so exploring this beautiful island so much history so much wildlife so much cool cool stuff that we've just done like it's been a full-on week but we've loved every second of it um we're now going to watch our last sunset the sun's decided to come out for our last night in orkney and we'll catch you in the next video where i actually don't know what we're going to be doing what are we doing some other island in some scotland. other island in scotland some awesome island in scotland with some more beautiful things to do but yeah we'll catch you then see you later